I know there are many of you who are huge Iva fans, and some of you probably be thinking that the Iva storyline hasn't been that interesting. Like everything with Olog and the ruse and the politics there, that's fascinating and fun, but Iva has no control. He just kind of watches it unfold. He's been humbled and sidelined from his defeat, so he's not the focal point of the story anymore. But from the looks of this episode 5 preview, all of that's about to change. We were traveling along the Silk Road. Why did you come back so early? We learned that someone else was staying with the Rus. Iva. So the men that Vixen was supposed to travel with along the Silk Road to China to do trading there have returned very quickly because they found some rumors that Iva has settled with the Rus and Prince Olog, which is disturbing news to the entire settlement. Having the former ruler who they threw out, who presumably wants to inflict revenge upon them, be taken in by a foreign country with a presumably strong army can only really mean one thing. An invasion is coming. So not only is Ivor getting thrust back into the spotlight by being this potential puppet ruler for Oleg that gives the legitimacy for the Rus to invade, but also with the events of episode 4, we can very much tell that he's planning to betray Olog, that he's moving the pieces into place, he's befriending Igor, telling him he's the rightful ruler of Rus and even promising Prince Dur, the chained up brother of Oleg, that he will rescue him and save him for reward. What Ivor's terms will be is yet to be discussed, but it seems like he's very much in the mindset he can't trust Oleg at all, which is what we've been talking about for quite some time now. It'll be so interesting to see how Uber and the other people in Kattegat kind of react to the idea of Ivor being back in their lives again and his threat kind of returning because they were quite dismissive of him, not really thinking about him at all, kind of focusing on the future, but now that problem's kind of circled back to them again. Perhaps Vitsid wasn't as crazy as he looked. Cohen! You have to kill Ivor. Oh, all right, um, I take it back. He is as crazy as he looks. And from the really dark imagery we're getting here, he's getting like peak crazy. This is the level of illusions and horror stories that you hear from like police officers when they're doing like anti-drug PSAs at schools and stuff. As the story progresses and Vixen remains very unwell, very ill, and not even people around him really understand mental health and what he's going through, we see he's kind of losing his support network one by one, especially with Uber in the last episode. And so that kind of isolation is probably what's making his visions go to this next level. Now we hear the dialogue from his illusion, the burnt figure of his girlfriend, that he must kill Ivor, and that could be something he grasps onto and makes his fate. Even before Vixid was this unwell, he was struggling with a lack of purpose. So perhaps if he makes killing Ivor his fate, his purpose, that could change him a bit. Though listening to your illusions when you're mad and then making that your life goal doesn't generally work out, but it could mean that Vixit's kind of propelled to leave Kattegat and try seek out Iva, especially as he hears the news of where his location is. So definitely I'll be paying attention in this episode to see where that storyline's kind of heading. This is an amazing occasion. Never before have we voted for a king of all Norway. So we see here that the trial that I thought possibly could be happening in the previous episode is going to happen now in episode 5. Olaf has convinced most of the petty lords and kings across Norway to gather together to elect one leader. From the cheering crowds and the excited people, this is quite the affair, and it's brought together a lot of different people from across the nation. It does give you a strong indication of how influential Olaf can be, that he can get so many people excited about such a radical and new idea. I'm sure most of these petty kings and lords have the idea that they could possibly aim for this position themselves. So even though it seems with Earl of Support and Harold maybe backing Bjorn that he should just step into the role quite easily, I'm sure there'd be quite a lot of back and forwards of hopefuls trying to make the position theirs. However, from the very first episode we ever meet Harold, we hear of his ambition and dream to become king of all Norway. Throughout every season he's been a part of Vikings, that has been a key feature of what he has dreamed about, what he has wanted to achieve. And now, for the first time ever, it looks like the world is about to make that happen to someone. And he's on the stage, right there. The wildest accomplishment that requires so much coordination and work between people who have never done it before is finally happening and he's just like one step away from taking that dream and making it reality. But he's lost his kingdom, he's been a prisoner for months, maybe even longer now, and Bjorn is clearly in the place to take this rule for himself. So will Harold be able to manifest his dream in this situation? Will he be forced to back Bjorn and delay his ascension to the throne yet again? 
Or perhaps if we look at Bjorn's body language and the way he talks about his thrones and the problems he's been dealing with, that maybe he doesn't even want this in the first place. Bjorn is a quiet type of character that keeps a lot of thoughts in his own head and contemplates things slowly. We know that he's always been focused on other goals outside of just being a king and ruling. It was never what he aimed for directly. So I think the show has an opportunity to throw a massive twist at us and throw the whole story on its head by making Hirald the king of all Norway. It's what his character has dreamed about, it's what his historical role will be, and we know that his ambition is still there. Bjorn chose to rescue and support Hirald once. He's been kind to him. We saw in the last episode he gave him his drink of water, made sure he was okay, and his only demand to meet with Olaf was that he was still alive. He considers Hirald a good friend and ally, and he's backed him before. But that's my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this election and how it's going to play out. They will attack again soon. On January 1st. So we see that the Lagatha storyline, the fight between the villagers and the bandits, won't be concluded in just one episode. As predicted, Vikings did stoop that low and did kill Bjorn's child. Fuck you, by the way, Vikings. Though now, Grinhild has arrived with a couple shield maidens of her own, and the villagers are quite determined to stay to defend not only the honor of the dead, but their homes and property. This is going to put Grinhild in a very strange position, because not only is she pregnant and doesn't have enough warriors to defend this village just with the reinforcements she brought, but I'm sure she's loath to leave Lagatha and the remaining child of Bjorn, the daughter, in harm's way just to defend a few little villages. So she'll have the decision of whether to risk herself, her child, her men, and stay with the villagers and fight with them, or just take maybe a couple of the children and leave Lagatha and the others to die. Maybe she'll try to go back as quickly as she can and bring back reinforcements, though the timing for that may not work out. So we may get another fight scene and more conflict in episode 5 around Lagatha and her struggle. Now the other important thing we saw here was that the next episode isn't going to be out until January 1st. So like they've done before, we'll have a one week break, and they'll be kind of skipping that for Christmas, and they'll start back up in the new year. Which is a little bit sad because I would thoroughly enjoy watching Vikings with my family on Christmas. That would be a sick tradition. So the question I have for you guys, the audience, is that I do want to do at least one video in that week. Like a Vikings Christmas special from King McKay. And I'd like to hear some ideas that you guys might have for what kind of video you'd like to see in that week. So anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you all have a happy holidays, and like always... Skull.